Welcome to Building Better Worlds. Our mission here is simple, to explore how the innovations of Web3 can be utilized to sustain the natural world. Join us as we learn how to navigate through and build our better worlds. All right. Um, thank you so much, Alison, for joining us today. I'm quite excited to have you on and dig into some of the topics and all things Web3 that you are definitely an expert at. I'd love to hear more about your background, though, so everybody knows a bit more about you and has a chance to get to know where you come from and, and what you've been up to the last few years. Yeah, it's great to see you again. Um, so thanks for your time. And my background before jumping into the wild world of crypto. So I grew up in traditional financial services. Uh, most specifically, I worked in portfolio construction in private wealth management at two separate investment banks. Banks. So my clients were entrepreneurs and private clients, as well as sort of institutional investors that were coming to me to look at and build a diversified portfolio. And um, I really became interested in this space um, about four years ago and did some dabbling on the side with investing before making the switch over more formally um, last year. Beautiful. And, and one of the big things that you do at Figment is, is kind of working with emerging teams and VCs as part of your work. Is that right? That's right. So at Figment, we do something, we're most well known for something called protocol staking, which is essentially where um, token holders stake or lock their tokens onto a network to maintain the ledger and earn compensation for doing that. So in blockchain, someone or something has to maintain the ledger. In Bitcoin, it's done through something called proof of work or mining. And, and most people are familiar with the mining concept. They've seen these, these mining rigs, um, and that's how um, the Bitcoin ledger is maintained. Everything else, including Ethereum, every other blockchain that has launched over the last two years, as well as looking forward, is launched via something called the proof of stake cons consensus mechanism. So um, we support institutional investors. So that's VCs, founding teams of these actual blockchains. They need their tokens to be staked. So we work with them, hedge funds, asset managers, family offices. And then we work with larger enterprises like custodians and exchanges as well. Um, so we support the infrastructure that keeps the ledger going. Um, and we also do something else that helps. It's called Data Hub. It's uh, helping developers build and scale on these different networks. And our approach is we need to support the infrastructure, but we also need developers building applications on these networks because that's what actually will make them fruitful and profitable and successful. Amazing. And and when you when you kind of think of staking as an investment, why is it a, a good investment opportunity? Maybe from two angles, A, staking itself, and then funding teams that are building staking type projects. Why is it a good investment on both sides of that? Yeah, so it's a good investment because somebody has to do the work, right? And um, it's this kind of concept that most people are familiar with. Like in Bitcoin, you don't have to own Bitcoin to be a miner, but in staking your tokens are actually locked on the network to do this work, to maintain the ledger. But Something that's pretty cool that you also get to participate in is governance. So you actually get to shape the network um, in technical changes, but as well as all sorts of areas of a network government governance so that the network um, can survive and thrive. And so it's a very participatory role. So that's that's definitely needed. Um, and Founding teams want validators on their network because more validators or more stakers make a network more secure. So you could think about it from the perspective of there's more people viewing these transactions and verifying them. So more eyes on these transactions is better. From an institutional investment standpoint, it's a much safer and predictable yield source. So there are many DeFi activities that people can get into um, and the yield is much more volatile and there's much more risk associated with that. Mm -hmm. um, but while you're still subject to price volatility when you stake, um, a lot of these risks that, in, that you know, are associated with other DeFi protocols do not exist with protocol staking. So institutional investors really like that for the stability as well as an attractive yield source um, when they're looking about across the investment landscape. When you kind of look at this investment landscape and specifically 
taking ESG into account? Is that a question that is asked a lot, either A, of new projects in this space? Um, is that a question that investors ask um, when they're considering staking in general? Yeah. So ESG is definitely at the forefront and is becoming an increasing um, element of or sort of pillar of how people are looking at their investment universe. So um, proof of work or mining has historically been very, very um, capital intensive and energy intensive. So it's not accessible and um, that's not a good thing. But when you're looking at staking, it actually is far more energy efficient. So I'm talking like to stake on Ethereum is 99.9% more energy efficient. So that sort of handles like some of the environmental questions that people have. Mm -hmm. I did talk about the governance and the participatory role, but there's all sorts of social elements that can take place and ESG objectives that can be obtained when investing in blockchain. And, and when you kind of look at this, is this a, a persistent trend that's been going on um, for a while? Or or do you think that the ESG bit is kind of picking up steam as this uh, industry in general gains um, credibility and, uh, and a bit more moat on an institutional level? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of, um, fundamentally, a lot of ESG has been, you know, again, aside from the Bitcoin mining, is incorporated into elements of the blockchain. As you see institutional investors engage in this space more and more, you're seeing ESG, um, you know, the importance of ESG grow. Mm. And uh, and when you're considering it more from a, what could we possibly do with it, like buying carbon credits is, is kind of an old TradFi trick that they had in, in the in their own bags. But what's coming up in the Web3 space, it's kind of more creative way of making ESG investing accessible, maybe even taking a look at it from kind of a, private wealth management perspective, what are the kinds of products that are coming up where people could uh, make that objective of being more ESG friendly a part of their investment strategies? Yeah. So um, there are managers that are launching that have an ESG lens to it. There's still arguably a, a long ways to go in this space and, and ways to increase adoption. But some of the cool things that are going on, as I mentioned, um, these networks transitioning over to proof of stake from an environmental standpoint is far more efficient. Um, blockchain networks and cryptocurrencies, you're seeing increased adoption in the underbanked. So from a social perspective, um, it's a more accessible operating environment. We're seeing cool things like, for instance, Filecoin, um, which is decentralized storage. For example, um, they've worked to archive uh, post-genocidal stories and testimonies in a way that is cheaper and more accessible for people. And um, there is the governance that I mentioned on too as, as people look to drive change. So there's really the sky is limit. You were seeing tokenization um, occur. Like I was talking to somebody about um, tokenizing some um, what they described as like sacred space, so endangered species and some protected lands. Um, so there's really so many different ways that people can participate in this space. Um, still early, um, still a bit, it requires a lot of due diligence from an investor standpoint and from a participation standpoint, but um, the sky is the limit with how people can participate in ESG um, utilizing blockchain technology. And uh, kind of stepping back, um, do you think that uh, including ESG in your decision making from a you know what to invest in perspective, do you think that that is something that will be a mission, a clear mission of folks moving forward, or will it become something that's just a necessary feature that every single investment vehicle will end up having to have in the future? Um, is it going to remain something special or not? Yeah, thankfully, I think it's going to move hand in hand. I think that people truly want to be better at this. And I also think that um, institutional investors, it's now part of their, their mandate and their mission to increase this focus. So I, I think that's, you know, it's all of, all of the above and we're not going to go backwards. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense.
Well, I think we're we're just about getting close to the twenty minute mark on uh, on this conversation. But I'd love to give you a chance to share anything else that is top of mind for you, especially from the from a staking perspective. What are some of the trends that you're seeing, and do you think that folks should keep an eye on um, as we're headed into the second quarter of the year? Yeah, so uh, lots of interesting things happening on protocol staking world. Um, one thing is Ethereum is transitioning from this proof of stake, a proof of work, or, or mining to proof of stake, uh, targeting later this summer. So that will be. Um, huge for the network and will increase participation and will make it easier for Ethereum to scale and for users to operate on the space and for all the benefits that accrue for working on the blockchain. So that's really, really exciting. Um, Something that we're encouraging people to do is um, the beauty of a lot of DeFi, of operating in cryptocurrencies, as I said, is it's accessible to all. So I've talked a lot about institutional investors, but But um, it's, you know, you can go on with a small sum of money and do a lot in DeFi world. You could stake one token or cryptocurrency. You could add to a liquidity pool. You could explore NFT world. Um, And so we're encouraging people to really, um, again, take amount of money that they're comfortable with, and it can be very, very small, and to sort of get their hands dirty and operate in this space because that's how you're going to learn it and how that's how the space is going to grow. Awesome. Amazing. And is there any specific way that you want people to get in touch with you if they want to learn more about all things staking? Sure. Um, you can find us at figment.io and we have our contact information there. We can talk to you about staking. We can talk to you about our node infrastructure. We can talk to you about what we're doing with the developer community and we'd love to connect. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Alison. Really appreciate your time. Thanks. It's great speaking with you.